Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how I created this awesome image of the Milky Way rising just behind this lighthouse, which actually is a composite of two separate images. One of them is a sunrise image that I shot in Mallorca, which is one of the Balearic Islands on the Mediterranean Sea in Europe, and the other image is a Milky Way shot that I took somewhere in the middle of nowhere in a boring field in Poland. Alright, so at the beginning let me just preface this video by saying that I'm personally not a huge fan of doing such composite it's, you know, taking two separate images and putting them together and pretending that this was a single shot. I don't really like this, you know, some people like compositing images, some people don't. I'm not here to judge, I'm here to help. So if you're one of the people that like to composite their images, I can just show you how to do it in Adobe Photoshop to make it look really, really good. When I posted this image actually on my Instagram, a lot of people couldn't even tell that this is a composite. So I think I did a pretty good job. So let's jump into Adobe Photoshop and let me show you how I did that. Okay, so we are here in Adobe Photoshop and as you can see, this is the base image of the ground that we are going to be working with. This is the sunrise shot uh, by the lighthouse. And then the second shot is a shot of the Milky Way right here in some kind of a boring field like I mentioned in the intro. So we are going to take the Milky Way from this image and paste it as a sky here on that image. And as you can see this image actually has two layers. It has a ground and the sky layer and if I turn it off you can see that this image was actually created by blending two different exposures. I had a brighter exposure for the ground right here and I had a darker exposure for the sky. This was a sunrise, so a very high dynamic range scene. So I needed to blend two exposures together of the same scene in order to create a nice looking final image. And as you can see, this layer of the sky has a pretty detailed mask on it. If I preview the mask, you can see that the mask is really, really good. If you look around these edges here, I have some bushes. I have a bush protruding here into the water. Then I have the lighthouse itself and then some details with the rocks on this side. And this is going to be the mask that I will be using to blend in my Milky Way right here in the sky so it doesn't cover my ground. And in this video I'm actually not going to dive too deep about how to create such a detailed mask, partly because this is a very long and painstaking process and in this video I want to do some live editing, but also I actually have a separate dedicated video about how to create such detailed mask. I talk about a lot of different techniques that I personally use to create such detailed masks, so if you want to watch that, if you want to learn how I do that, definitely watch this video about creating these masks. I will put it by the end screen of this video so you can watch it after you're done with this one. But don't worry, there's actually a lot to this process to create such a good blend. Not only the mask around the horizon, and this is the whole point of this video, that masking around the horizon creating a perfect mask is not enough to create such a composite image that looks realistic. So let me show you all the other steps that I needed to do to create my final shot. All right, so let's start by actually grabbing this sky from this image. And as you can see right here, this is also a blend of two exposures. I had a ground shot and a sky shot. If I turn off the ground, as you can see, this is my sky. The ground is blurry because I was using an astro tracker to create a high quality image of the sky. So let me just grab the sky. I can just duplicate it and send it over to my other document right here. Uh, okay. Right now I can actually close this because I don't know I'm going to need this document anymore. And here we are going to turn it off. So let's first start by creating a rough mask around our horizon line right here when the sea is meeting the sky. So I'm going to take the rectangular mark hue and I'm just going to draw a mask that looks something like this. And then we are going to apply it to this image as a layer mask. So with this selection, I'm just going to click on the mask icon right here and this creates the mask. Of course, I need to feather it a bunch to make it blend nicely. So I'm just feathering out, feathering it out. Uh, the problem right here is that it is feathering these edges right here. So in order to combat this, we can actually disable the linking between the image layer and the mask, so I'm disabling that, and then with the mask selected, I'm gonna hit the free transform, so Command T or Control T if you're on a Windows, and then just uh, enable that and move it upwards. Okay, as you can see, those edges are not feathered out, only this edge right here is feathered out. This is exactly what I want. And right now, let's make use of this mask that I have already created right here for the image of the ground. So in order to sort of use two masks on the same image, I'm just going to put it into a group. So I'm going to select this and hit the group icon, then put this guy into the group and then holding the Alt or Option key, I'm going to copy the mask from here to the group. And right now, as you can see, this is how it looks. This is without this mask. This is with the mask. So now these elements that were previously covered by the sky can be visible. 
And as you can see, this is pretty much how it would look if we were only to use a mask around the horizon and feather it out. Obviously, it doesn't look very good. So first, let's actually reposition our sky. So with the mask that is unlinked from the layer, I can have the layer selected and then activate the free transform. So again, Command or Control T. And then I can move my sky to be in somewhat more interesting position. I can actually, uh, as you can see, this is part of the ground from the sky right here. So I can rotate it a little bit. I can maybe resize it even. Something like this. I. Uh, really like so I'm just gonna accept this right here and this already looks a little bit better but still it really doesn't look much believable so we need to do something with the ground because the ground wouldn't be that kind of a warm and very reddish color if you're shooting this at night the ground would be definitely more blue so let's start by making the ground blue and there are a couple of different ways that you can do this in Photoshop the way I like to do it is by using the curves adjustment so I'm just gonna add a curves adjustment by going here and selecting the curves and then of course I want the curves to actually affect only my ground so I'm gonna move it out of the group right here actually no this is this is out of the group and then I'm gonna add some blue so I'm gonna activate the curves I'm gonna go to the red curve and I'm gonna dial it down that way I'm going to remove a lot of the red from our ground. This is already starting to get a little bit better. And then I'm going to switch to the blue curve and I'm going to move it upwards. I'm going to pump a little bit more blue into my ground. And this starts to look more like a night scene. And then of course I need to darken it down. So I'm going to switch it to RGB and I'm just going to move the curve a little bit down in order to sort of darken it. And that's probably the way I would like it. Maybe tweak it around a little bit. And this already looks a little bit better, but we are going to need to darken the water here because the water we are actually going to be keeping will be adding a reflection of the sky and the water in just a moment, but we need to make it darker because obviously this water, that rich of a blue color, doesn't match this scene. So I'm going to add another curves adjustment again here and then curves. I'm going to move it here. And then I'm going to use the mask of the sky, this one again, so I'm going to remove this mask that was added by default and then holding the option or alt key I'm going to copy the mask here. And right now I'm just going to darken it down and this probably looks uh, a little bit better. So right now I want to add the reflection in the water of our sky and as you can see this water doesn't look all that great. As you can see you can see this ripples of water, it's not perfectly smooth. If this was taken as a long exposure the water would be way more smooth than what I have right here. And this is actually something that cannot be easily fixed in post-production. If I was shooting this image of the ground with the intention to blend it together with a Milky Way night scene I would have used uh, an ND filter on my lens uh, and D filter. I have a VND right here which is as I turn it as you can see it's getting darker or <laughs> brighter but of course you don't need to have a VND you can actually for photography only I would recommend to use a fixed density ND filter. This is something that you can screw on onto your lens and even at daytime even if it's super bright you can take long exposure photos and that way you can smooth out the water. So this is what I would do if I was taking this photo with the intention to blend it but because I didn't do that we need to work with what we got. And by the way, a link to some of the ND filters that I would recommend will be down below in the description if you want to check it out. Okay, so to add the reflection, this is actually very easy. We are going to uh, copy this layer of the sky that we have right here. So to, in order to copy that, I can hit Command or Control J. This created a copy of that. Then I'm going to invert this mask because I want to see it right down below the horizon light here. So in order to invert this mask, I'm going to hit Command or Control I. This inverts this mask and then I'm going to flip this layer upside down. So the way I do it usually is by going to free transform. So command or control T and then you need to disable this one. This is the uniform scaling and then in height you can type minus 100% and that will flip it exactly like I want it. So I'm just going to accept it right here and then of course I need to reposition this. Again make sure that you don't have the layer and the layer mask linked together. So make sure there's no link right here. And then with this one activated, again, free transform and I can move it down by sliding the Y coordinate to the right. This moves it down 
and I need to align it properly. All right, so this probably looks pretty good in terms of positioning, but of course it is too strong. So let me first accept this. And then in order to make it sort of blend in with the water, what we need to do is we need to dial down the opacity. So I can take the opacity and dial it down to something like, uh, I don't know, I think I used like 35% before. Let's use 35. Okay, 36. I think this looks pretty good. We have a hint of the reflection here in the water, but obviously it's not too overwhelming. You can also play around with the blending modes right here, maybe screen or something, but honestly, I think that normal with dial down opacity looks the best to my eye. And right now we are actually very close to the final image, but something still feels a little bit off. And what feels off to my eye is that this line, this transition between the sky and the water here is a little bit too clear. Usually, I don't know if you notice, but if you're by the sea and you try to witness a sunrise or a sunset, you don't actually usually see the sun that is hiding just behind the horizon line. It usually disappears a little bit before it hits the horizon line where the water meets the sky. And that is because usually by the seaside and especially on summer hot days, there's a lot of haze, there's a lot of vapor from the water that is going up and this is creating this layer of haze around the actual horizon. So I think in order to make this image look a little bit more realistic we need to add this haze because this is how it would look like if I were to take it like on location both the sky and the ground it would be a lot more hazy around horizon all right so let me show you a very easy technique to add this kind of a haze to an image so in order to do that I'm going to use the Adobe Camera Raw sliders because I don't know if you recall but there is a dehaze slider in Adobe Camera Raw and we can actually move it left to create the haze instead of removing it. So first, let me just stamp visible everything that I have right here so I can have a single image layer with everything that I have uh, visible right now. So in order to do that, I can hit the combination of keys, Command, Alt, Shift, and E. Of course, Command would be Control if you're on Windows, and this created this layer image with everything else combined into that. And right now I can go to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter, and this opens up Adobe Camera Raw that is, you know, similar to Lightroom, if you're familiar with Lightroom. And what I can do right now is I can take the dehaze slider and add the haze by sliding it to the left. So this creates a lot of haze. It actually gets a little bit too bright. So I'm going to dial down the exposure, probably something like this. I can also dial down the contrast to make it even more kind of hazy. And this probably looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit OK here. And because the dehaze and the contrast was a global change, we need to, of course, mask that out. So I'm going to take the rectangular mark hue again, and I'm going to create a rectangle around my horizon. Something like this would be good, I think. And with this selection and with this layer selected, I'm going to hit the mask icon, and this creates a mask right here around the horizon. And then, of course, we need to feather it out. So let me just do that. And after a bunch of feathering, I think this looks pretty good. The only problem is that this haze is also in my foreground here in the lighthouse. So in order to combat this, we are going to again add this to a group. So I'm going to add this to a group. And then we are going to take the same mask of the sky, again holding the Alt or Option, move it to this group, actually copy it to this group. And that way the haze is only on the horizon and it doesn't affect our foreground. And the only two final touches that I would do at this stage is first add a little bit of a vignette. This is of course optional, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. I like it and the way I do it is by taking a huge ellipse around the entire image and then creating a curves adjustment with this selection. So again, curves. And then I need to actually invert this. So again, I'm going to hit Command I. This is the inverse and then I'm going to move it down in order to darken my edges. And of course, feather out the mask to create the final vignette. And this looks pretty good. Again, this is uh, actually I need to move it upwards to make it affect the entire image. Yeah, that way. So this is without the vignette and this is with the vignette. I think it looks pretty good. And the very last thing that I would do here is if I zoom here into the ground, as you can see, this ground looks a little bit too smooth for me. Normally for a nightscape, the image is not going to be that clean. I was taking this shot with ISO, I think 100 or maybe 200. So the image is super clean and it's not that believable that I would take such a noise free image during the night. So what we can do right here is we can actually add noise to the foreground. You may or may not want to do it, but I just want to show you what's possible. So 
In order to do that, I'm going to, this is the ground, by the way, that we are using from the very bottom most layer. So I'm just going to copy that by hitting the command or control J. This creates a copy of this layer. And then to this one, I can add the noise. So I'm going to go to filter, noise, and then add noise. And then of course you don't want to overdo it. So I think the noise of amount three is enough here. You can toggle the preview to kind of see how it affects the image. Take a look at this part of the road. I can actually zoom it in here and then take a look at this. This is a very tiny effect, but I think it adds a little bit of more realisticness, if you will, to that image. So I'm gonna hit okay. And this is pretty much how my final photo looks. I think it looks pretty awesome. So as you can see, there are a lot of steps involved to create such a composite of two completely different looking images. It's not just all about creating a very detailed and very high precision mask around the horizon. There are actually a lot of more steps involved to make a final photo that looks realistic. So if you found this video helpful, please make sure to leave a like down below. I would really appreciate it. And also right now, if you wanna check out my videos about how I create those highly detailed and precise masks around the horizon check out these two videos you will find them definitely interesting for sure and also consider subscribing to my channel right here because i will be creating a lot more astrophotography and photography tutorials in the future so it's definitely worth subscribing all right see you next time hopefully and bye bye